So before someone starts off doing army basic training or even OSIT one station unit training, which is what infantry and MPs and certain other MOSs do, they have to go through what is called reception. This is like week zero, the very beginning. And you might be curious, what do I do during reception in basic or even in OSIT? For the most part, it sucks, right? You gotta embrace the suck, I guess you could say, you know, get the themed shirt to kind of support the uh, the theme here in this video. But nonetheless, you know, reception sucks, mostly because you're ready to get started, you're ready to start training, you're ready to become a soldier, to get into your job, whatever, and you have this first week of just junk that you have to do before you can even start the training, really. This is the first location you show up to. When you go and you leave MEPS, you get on a bus, you get on a plane, whatever, and then on another bus, or whatever, to take you over to the basic training battalion to reception. And you'll show up probably late at night and get yelled at maybe, or it really depends sometimes on the drill sergeant. Sometimes it'll just be kind of like a stern talking to kind of a thing because like I said, the training hasn't really begun yet. That's That stuff's supposed to come a little bit later, but they're gonna tell you, you know, what to do before you get off the bus. And then they're gonna probably kind of get you moving in a fashion that's fast and hurry, hurry up and get the hell off the damn bus kind of a thing. So you show up at reception, you got all your luggage, you got some paperwork and everything that you got from MEPS when they sent you on your way and and they're probably collecting up a lot of that stuff the first night. So a lot of times, I don't even know why they do this, but it seems like a lot of the time you're arriving at nighttime for reception and they're collecting up all this information from you to be able to go and, you know, have the records and then you'll start kind of the process of getting in process into the army. And this might last a while before they finally take you to wherever you're gonna be staying to sleep at. So you're not fully getting yelled at. You might have some moments where, yeah, you're getting yelled at and stuff like that by the drill sergeants, but it's not the full on basic training, you know, OSIT kind of experience just yet. So I wanna kind of cover like the day to day, but it'll kind of vary a little bit. It really depends on the leadership, but to give you a general idea, I mean, a lot of this is admin stuff, right? Things like collecting up your information about your bank so they can get your direct deposit going and try to get that process, all the other factors for your medical and for everything else. So that way you can get you into the system, that way you'll be covered for medical and you can start getting paid because you really are getting paid from day one. Day one, you show up at reception, that's when you'll start getting paid from there on out. Now you're supposed to get paid on the 1st to 15th, but sometimes that at first paycheck, depending on when you start a reception, may be a little bit delayed because it might take a little bit to get you into the process or into the system really. So you gotta get all that basic paperwork stuff for pay, for medical, for anything else that you gotta get taken care of. You're doing a lot of that stuff, filling out forms, passing it up, passing it to the side and whatever kind of a thing. Maybe some drill starts yelling at you a little bit here and there, but for the most part, it's not the full on basic training or OSIT experience just yet. There are gonna be maybe some moments where the drill starts still yelling and stuff, but not probably at the same level as actual basic training. During this time is also when you're doing things like, you know, getting your uniforms, right? You have to get fitted for your uniform, for the dress uniform, for, you know, making sure you get the right, you know, camouflage uniform, for the army combat uniform, uh, making sure that, you know, you get the physical fitness uniform, all the uniform stuff. You're gonna usually probably see some civilian individuals. There'll be drill sergeants there that are, you know, kind of there making sure everything flows properly, but you'll be talking to like some civilian people that kind of work there that are fitting you for the stuff and you're making sure to let them know, hey, this doesn't fit very well or whatever. So that way you, you'll have uniforms that look good on you and fit properly. This is also the time frame when you're probably getting like your ID card done. They'll take photos of you for like a cool graduation photo of you in uniform, all that kind of fun stuff. You'll get your haircut for the men, you know, where you have to, you know, pay for this, you know, cheap haircut, I guess, kind of a thing, but you're all getting the same haircut. Most of the time, usually there will be some kind of like physical fitness kind of test. It's kind of a little bit kind of uh, here and there with like the new army combat fitness test going into place where I've heard from some individuals going through reception that yes, they had like a little mini kind of fitness test that they had to do and then other people saying they didn't do any fitness tests at all. So that may vary based on the leadership and the location, I guess. You'll get fed. You're, you still have the kind of the crazy, you know, restrictions of, you know, being in the chow hall where you can't look around, can't talk and stuff like that. But you will get fed. You'll get breakfast, lunch and dinner. What time you're getting done each day, it, it could be kind of late. It could be kind of early, but you're only going to really get free time. You're not going to have like any time during reception where you're going to get to, you know, go check out the sites and go to the PX and do different things like that. 
I've heard a little bit of mixed things from some individuals. Some people have said that they did get to keep their cell phones during reception, and then when they showed up for actual basic training, that's when they had to lock them up. And I've heard from other people that know they actually had to lock up their cell phones even in reception. So that may vary on that one, but you'll probably at some point in time, at least at a minimum, have an opportunity to probably call home to let someone know your mom, your dad, your spouse, whatever, somebody back home that you made it to reception, you made it to your basic training location safely. If all goes well, then once that week is done, then you move over to a different unit. It's probably like across the street, down the street, whatever. And that's where basic training or OSIT actually starts. There can be situations where you end up being what's called a holdover. So if there's something medically that you're not ready to be able to go off to basics, physically, maybe if they did do like an initial physical uh, fitness test type of thing, you couldn't pass it, then you maybe have to stay longer. And if you end up being stuck as a holdover, then that sometimes can screw things up because if it's something where you're gonna be stuck being a holdover for a while, then that could delay like when you actually, you know, graduate from basic training because now you're gonna miss that class that you were with for them starting basic training and you have to wait until whenever the next class is, which might be a couple weeks down the road, maybe a month down the road, whatever. And until you are able to actually start basic training or OSIT, you're stuck being this holdover, which basically means you're doing like crappy details where you're like mopping floors and being a janitor and doing other things that they need the soldier to do and keep you busy and make it to where, you know, they have like a, I don't know, some help with certain things that, that need to be done around the area. So like I said, there'll be a few variations, maybe here or there type of thing, but that's the kind of a little bit of a breakdown to, to understand what you might, you might expect when you, when you go off to basic training is that you have that first initial week, week zero, reception week of all this admin stuff, shots, pictures, paperwork, all sorts of things. So you have to do vaccinations and everything, haircuts, all that stuff that I was talking about. That all happens during that first week. Then once that's all done, then you actually start the actual training. So try to stay motivated. It's tough. It's boring. You're probably just ready to get it done and over with, and you can't until you get past that week. Sometimes it's not even a full week. Sometimes it's maybe only four days, five days type of thing. Sometimes it's a full on week. It may vary on how things are kind of processing, how efficient they are with getting you processed and get you going to get you into, you know, the actual basic training battalion and start your training. But nonetheless, that's what you probably can expect. Hopefully this is helpful to you to understand what to expect that first week when you first show up for your basic trainer OSIT. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. But I want you your experience to, to continue here on the Christopher Chaos channel. So make sure you check out this video right here. YouTube says it's great for you and maybe you haven't seen it yet. So go watch it, check it out, see if it's any good. Check out my links down in the description box down below. Hit that thumbs up. I'm Christopher Chaos. I'll see you next time. See ya.